Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about electronic DC load. So for a few days, I have been thinking about making one of the uh, electronic loads that I can use to test some of the power supply modules that I have laying around. Now, in order to test that, I have a few methods. The first one, obviously, is to use a resistor across the output terminal of the power supply. Now, using a resistor of a higher wattage will definitely do the job. To uh, use this method, you need to have a resistor that can dissipate quite a lot of power. Another problem of using resistor is that current across a resistor changes linearly with voltage by the Ohm's law. So if your power supply actually changes the voltage over time or uh, if you're connecting it to a battery, then obviously the amount of current flowing through the a resistor will change and eventually the power dissipated will also change. So it won't uh, give you an accurate measurement over time. Then obviously the second method is to use a switch or a MOSFET in this case between the resistor and the load to control the current flowing through the circuit. Now this type of design has a, a control feedback system which we can use to control the current flowing through the circuit. Now the heat generated will be dissipated across the MOSFET and the resistor here will be acting as a shunt resistant across which we can take the uh, measurements to uh, measure the current flowing in the circuit. Now in this method of electronic load you need to have a MOSFET that can handle quite a lot of power or a MOSFET that can dissipate a lot of power. So we need to choose a MOSFET with quite a high power dissipation value. And obviously the MOSFET needs to be connected to a heat sink that can dissipate the heat generated. Now, if we just take a look into the uh, MOSFET IRF3205, we can see the resistance between the drain and source is minimum eight milli ohms when we supply a gate source voltage of 10 volt. And the threshold voltage is between 2 to 4 volts. So that means when we supply a voltage less than 10 volt and between 4 to 10 volt, we can actually get a resistance more than this 8 milli ohm. So this is a special case when we use this MOSFET to dissipate the energy. If you supply voltage more than 10 volt, the MOSFET will fully turn on and it will be in the complete conduction mode. But for our application, we want to operate this under the full conduction mode. So now if I just take a look into the uh, characteristic graph here, you can see as we increase the uh, gate source voltage, the current actually increases. That means the resistance decreases. And after 10 volt, the current carrying capacity is almost flattened. That means the resistance comes to its minimum value. But below 10 volt, we have quite a huge amount of resistance that we can utilize to dissipate the energy. So for our application, we are going to operate the MOSFET in this left side region because in this region, the MOSFET will actually not turn on fully and it will dissipate the power. So here I have made a very simple circuit to test the concept that I have explained here. So I have used a Arduino to uh, measure the voltage across the resistance and then I will uh, generate a PWM signal to control the gate of the MOSFET. Now the uh, Arduino has an inbuilt 8-bit internal ADC which is not sufficient enough for the uh, accuracy. So I have used a 16-bit ADC that is ADS1115 in this case which uh, actually connects over the I squared C line to the Arduino. So this will uh, provide quite a high uh, resolution and uh, quite accuracy in measurement of current. Now, uh, this uh, will act as a feedback to see what amount of current is flowing through the circuit. Now, I have an uh, operational amplifier with a gain set to 2 so that we can actually uh, get a voltage up to 10 volts. Now, the Arduino PWM will obviously give us an output of 5 volt maximum and uh, we have seen the 
threshold voltage of the MOSFET is between 2 to 4 volts. That means it actually starts conducting from 4 volts to 10 volts. So we actually need a voltage range between 4 to 10 volts. So in order to get a voltage between 4 to 10 volt, we need an operational amplifier that will actually increase the voltage. Now I have set this amplifier with a gain of 2 so that we can actually uh, double the voltage. Now this signal is then passed through a low pass filter to actually cut off the ripples and convert the digital signal into an uh, analog signal. So this is obviously a crude method to convert a digital signal to an analog signal but still I hope it will work and this analog signal will be fed to the uh, MOSFET gate. That means we are actually controlling the voltage to control the current flowing through the circuit. And we are going to supply a voltage range between 4 volt to 10 volt to control the current. So here I have made the circuit on the breadboard. So this is my homemade Arduino that I'm going to use. And I will be using the timer 1, which is uh, obviously the first channel is connected to pin 9 to generate the PWM. And this PWM signal will be sent to the op amp, which is LM358. So pin 3, that is uh, going to the pin 3 of the op amp. And uh, the op amp is powered from uh, external power supply using these two pins so that it should not affect the uh, testing load that we are going to test. Now, uh, the output of the op amp is then fed to this uh, resistor and capacitor, which is acting as a low pass filter. And then the uh, signal from the low pass filter is going to the gate of the MOSFET. The source of the MOSFET is connected to the shunt resistor, which is in this case 3 watt 1 ohm resistor. And the other end of the resistor is connected to the negative of the power supply. And obviously the drain of the MOSFET is connected to the positive of the power supply. Now here is the ADS1115 uh, I2C 16 uh, bit ADC, which I'm going to use to measure the current through this resistor. So here I will be using the differential method to reduce the noise uh, so that I can measure the exact current values between the uh, resistors. So this module is connected to my Arduino using the I2C connection, that is SDA, SCL, and obviously VCC and power. So now I will just uh, write a code that will uh, execute our testing program. So now I am here on the uh, computer screen. So here I have used the ADS1115 library and declared some variables which we are going to need for the calculation. Now the float set current is the amount of current that I am going to pass through the MOSFET. So the set current value will actually decide the amount of current or it will actually control that much current through the MOSFET. So in this case I have set to 0 0.2 which is actually a 200 milliamps of current. Then in the setup section, I have uh, declared the pin 9 as the output and uh, these two lines of code actually uh, sets the uh, frequency of the output channel to 15 kilohertz and its uh, output is on the uh, channel A. So I'll be using the OCR1A register. Now, uh, if you want a separate video on the timers and counters of Arduino, please uh, write in the comment section. I will definitely try to make one video on that topic as well. So now then uh, after that we have declared the serial begin and uh, one uh, line to just start the program and then ADS begin will obviously uh, initialize the ADS module. Then in the loop section I will be uh, measuring the current reading using the ADS read differential 01. So this function will actually get the difference between the ADS values between the pin 0 or the a0 of this ADS1115 and the pin 1 of this ADS1115. So it's measuring the difference so that we should not have any noise between the uh, actual ground and the measured ground. Then that value is uh, multiplied to 0 0.1875 which is the uh, default PGA gain. And then it is divided by 1000 to get the current in uh, amps. Then uh, I have put a counter which counts to 100 and every 100 reading of the current will be printed using the uh, serial print function to our serial monitor. Then in the uh, main loop, we have the current and the set current comparison, which will actually compare the set current value, which is uh, two, uh, 200 milliamps I have set here 
to the current that is uh, measured and according to that it will actually increment or decrement the duty cycle of our PWM signal and then it will obviously increment the counter after every loop and then uh, after every hundred uh, reading will be printed on our CLR monitor. So now let's compile this code and I will connect my Arduino to the computer and then I will upload the code. So now in the serial monitor, I'm getting zero amp flowing. So I will just connect the uh, additional power supply to the op amp from an external solar battery. And then I will turn on the uh, programmable power supply that I have here. I've set this to six volt, 500 milliamp maximum in case uh, there is something goes wrong. The current should not increase by, by 500 milliamps. So I will just turn on and see whether it reads uh, 200 milliamps or 0 0.2 amps maximum or more. So I'll just turn on and okay. So it's regulating at 0 0.2 amp. Now there is a uh, overshoot there and the reason for that is because the power supply was initially turned off. So at that moment, the PWM signal was fully turned on as it is reading zero current. So it has turned on completely uh, the uh, MOSFET gate. So in the final design, I will have to uh, put a system so that I can actually turn on and off the PWM signal as per my need. So now I will just try to uh, test this with a different value of current. So now I will just upload 0.4. Uh, 100 milliamps and I will turn off the power supply for the time being. So now in the serial monitor I have uploaded the new sketch which I have changed the current value to 0 0.4 amps and I will turn on the power supply to see whether it's regulating or not. So now I am getting a current value of 0. 4 amps exactly and on my power supply as well and getting slightly less reading. Now I assume this uh, uh, slight less reading could be due to the uh, resistance of these wires or it could be due to the uh, uh, use of this uh, crude RC filter to actually convert the digital signal to analog signal. So either of these two reasons could be the uh, factor that actually uh, measures the current a little bit low. So I will have to fix this and uh, maybe uh, I will try with a dedicated DAC to uh, actually convert the digital signal to analog signal and see if I could uh, get a better result. So for now I'm getting uh, quite a positive result on this and it's quite hot. The MOSFET is barely touchable because it's now dissipating 2.3 watts of power. Now, if I just uh, try to change the voltage and uh, see whether it can hold the uh, same amount of current or not, I will just reduce the voltage to 5 volt, 4 volt, 3 volt, 2 volt, 1 volt, and still it's regulating at 400 milliamps, as I can see in the uh, power supply unit as well as on the serial monitors. Now, I will uh, increase the power or the voltage to up to 10 volt because I don't want to increase the dissipated power because as I increase the voltage, the uh, amount of power dissipation also increases because of the fact that current remains constant. So we'll just increase to 10 volts and see I'm actually dissipating around 4 watts of power with a regulation of 400 milliamps of current. So to my experiment, it's uh, fairly successful and I will just turn off so that uh, the MOSFET shouldn't get extremely hot. So that's all for this video. I'm uh, getting quite a positive result in uh, today's experiment. So I'm planning to uh, upgrade these uh, MOSFET with a high power MOSFET. Maybe I'll be using the uh, IRFP series MOSFETs like uh, IRFP 250, 260 or 460, 450 like that. So those MOSFETs actually can dissipate a huge amount of heat. And my plan is to use a different heat sink with a heat sink fan. So I, I have these uh, huge aluminum heat sinks and I want to connect these with a uh, fan. 
so that I can get more cooling over higher power dissipation. So that's the plan for now. And so in the next part, I will be uh, trying with a DIC converter and I will replace this RC filter to see if it is any good. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching. If you like the video and if you want to uh, get update on this project, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you uh, find this video helpful, please like and share and subscribe. So thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.